Hello everyone, Jim Hodges here, Annie here. Annie is an 11 month old golden retriever, came in for our residency program. A fantastic dog, she's excited, she's happy, she's very friendly. Probably the biggest thing with Annie is she gets a little defiant or headstrong at times. She wants things her way, not your way. And I tell people all of the time that what we wanna do is become our dog's leader. When we become our dog's leader in all forms, it teaches a dog that they can't push boundaries, and it also teaches them that they can be comfortable and confident and secure in who we are, that we place the rules, okay? It's a little rainy. We've got another hurricane coming this way, or at least the, the weather part of it, but uh, Annie's about ready to go home, and we thought we would try to get this video in before it gets even worse. So, what do we do with Annie? Well, what we start off with is our obedience. Obedience, again, is a wonderful way to address all behaviors. How do we do that? Obedience, maybe, let's go. Obedience allows us to teach a dog to follow our commands in the moment. When she does what we want, we praise. When they disobey and they know they're disobeying, we provide a consequence. Now, don't think bad of consequence. Consequence is not designed to intimidate, dominate, break a dog's spirit, hurt them or have them fear us. It's just designed to be a physical touch, just as I believe dogs communicate on a primary basis with each other and with us, to let them know with a verbal act or no that they've done something wrong. Keep in mind on the flip side of it when we're doing obedience and she does it, sit. And a girl, break. It's to communicate to her that we're pleased with what's going on. We communicate that the praise with words, touch, a toy, a treat, something along that line, all at the same time, in the moment. Okay, it's important that we consequence or praise in the moment she should, so she understands exactly why she's done something, okay? And we go from there. The thing we wanna do is make sure we find reasons to genuinely and sincerely praise our dog at least 20 times more during the day than we provide a consequence. Anytime we provide a consequence, we want to come back and provide a light piece of praise after we're through. So if I had her in a command and she broke it, I would bite, provide the consequence, tell her no, repeat the command, and then once she did it, I'd come back and give a little bit of praise. Not as much as if she did it right the first time, but enough to let her know I'm happy with her and that we can move on in a positive fashion, okay? So, we're gonna do obedience. Watch my hand signals, look at my tone of voice, watch her. If she messes up, she messes up. If I mess up, I mess up, but we're gonna work with it in the moment and fix it, and I'll make you aware of it. So the very first thing is, let's go girl, let's go, is my walking command. Uh, she walks with me at my speed. I change speeds, I change direction. A girl and she walks with me when I stop she doesn't have to sit she just can't pull so when we're in a let's go or we're walking down the street and we meet someone and we're stopping and talking she's content and we're content for her not to be in a command but the one thing she can't do is get up and start walking and pulling the leash if the leash gets tight she's supposed to realize and give in if she does it we would tap right back to our side let's go Girl. Come on, sweet. Let's go. Come. Good girl. The come command is like this. I ask her to come to me and sit, and she's supposed to hold it. This is a perfect time to give her a treat, especially when we're doing off-leash come or recall command. Break. Good girl. You notice I broke her and I stepped away. One of the things is, is I'll use the word break to let her know she doesn't have to do that command anymore. She's off work for a second, for five minutes, for the rest of the day. But when I break in the beginning, I like to step away. And the reason I like to do that is to get her to naturally, subliminally want to come to. When she walks up to me, I'm a praiser. I might give her a little bit of treat. I'll do something to uh, make sure she knows that I'm very happy with what's going on. Even now, I don't have her on a let's go, but she's not pulling the leash. 
when we're walking, if she pulls, if she goes off in one direction, remember, I'm going to tap the leash, good girl, right back to my side. I'm not going to pull her. When I pull, I do the work for her. She doesn't have to think. When I pull, with a lot of dogs, it's a natural reaction to pull the other way. The tap sort of makes her have to think about what we want. Let's go. So the next command is the sit. Add a girl, hand signal for sit is like that. She sits. When I ask her to sit, she has to sit. She has to hold that sit until I release her or move on to another command. Now, one thing about big bone dogs, I don't like to keep them sit forever. 15 seconds, 30 seconds, uh, maybe a minute, but I just don't like to put that pressure on their hips. Let's go. So I try not to do anything in a stay type environment with sit, like sit, stay, or sit at her holding. And signal again, at a girl. If she didn't sit or she popped up, I would be aware of that and I'd be ready for it. And if she didn't do it, it would be, no, sit. That's my consequence. Again, we're not here to hurt, we're here to direct. Good, next we're gonna do the down. Good girl, hand signal for down from in front. She downs, I'll pet her and love her. She has to hold that down until I release her. Same rules with the sit command. I'm not gonna use the word S-T-A-Y, at least right now. I believe that takes a different meaning. So she's in that D-O-W-N command and holding it until I release her. I could release her until a recall to any other command that I wanted to do. Sit. Good girl, let's go. So that's from in front. If she did not do the D-O-W-N, pretend like this is her head, I would reach up and take the leash and tap towards the ground. And when I tapped, I would say no, and then I would repeat that command, okay? Doing everything on a leash. We have to start somewhere, okay? We can't immediately go off leash in most instances, okay? So that's the reason we have a loose leash. That's the reason that we tap and release so we're not pulling and she's getting that idea that we can ask her to do something and for some reason she has to do it. A foot away from us, two feet, five feet, 10 feet. It's important that when we're working on a leash and when we progress to off leash, we never give a command unless we know she's gonna do it or we're in a position to make her do it, okay? So that was the D-O-W-N from in front. Come on, baby. Down. Notice the hand signal, she was already going down. Good girl, let's go. Same tap on the leash, it was just she had the down from the side for it. The next command is the place. Good girl. Places get on your bed. You can lay down, sit down, stand up, read a book. I don't care what she does as long as she gets on the bed and stays there. She can easily do this for a couple hours at a time. One of the things we'll do from time to time with her here, we'll give her one of my yak snacks or an elk antler to chew because she chews them at home and allow her to chew sometimes. We want her to have a good time. We want her to feel comfortable, but this is a great way of getting her out of our hair if we're eating dinner, we're wanting to relax, or we have company. If she was to get up from that place command, in the beginning we have the leash on, and then after the leash we may have a little smaller leash called a tab, if she gets up, we're going to tap the leash, just like we do with the let's go, but back towards the center of the bed. And we would go, no, 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 place. My hand signal for place is like this, okay? And she's doing it. Remember, I'm not going to tell her to down or sit or anything on this command, on this bed or this command. Place is the command. Let's go, girl. So we come back through. Watch this as we go again. She goes to the bed, turns around, and a girl. I'll watch for her, make sure she's gonna stay on the bed. She's in the place. Break. Turn back around. That's it. Good girl. Next is the on leash calm command. We do the on leash command so she starts to understand what it's all about, and then we transition to off leash, okay? A little bit different rules off leash, but it's the same basic thing, okay? You remember what I said? I think I had said it earlier, but what we want to do is at times we want to uh, reward her with words, touch, treat, toy. Well, I've just loaded up a treat. Uh, I don't know if she knows I've got it. She may have seen me get it. I put it in my pocket instead of a bag so it's a little more hidden. 
but you know, dogs have a wonderful sense of smell. But I'm gonna set her up, watch my hand signal. <sighs> she comes, she sits. Good girl. I should have actually praised a little bit sooner. Good girl. But you notice I gave her the treat. I'm petting her and I'm praising her right. at the same time. The reason I'm doing words touch treat or words touch toy at the same time is I'm trying to make that relationship with each one of those things synonymous. We want to make her happy and we want her to know that when we say good girl, she may have a flashback to being pet or to getting a treat. I'm not a treat trainer, but I believe we use treats to help motivate especially with the recall commands. And we do it as much as we want to do it. On the off-leash recall, we may do it two or 300 times. But what we're trying to do is firm up her coming to us. And we never want our dogs to come to us and think we're gonna uh, do something negative, like punish them or put them up and us leave. We always want them to come to us and know that they're gonna interact with us. And then, after they've interacted, a minute or two later, if we had to put them up, we would put them up. So the next thing is we talk about on leash. I'm going to see if I can get her to, I feel like I'm going to move on here a minute. Let's go. The next thing is to load up. The load up command could be to get in the vehicle, could be to load up on furniture. I don't allow my dogs to get on furniture on their own. Uh, Annie's family does it. She's pretty good about furniture, but it's still a great command if you ever want her on furniture, but for sure to load up in the vehicle. Okay, baby, load up. Atta girl, good girl. Right, if you notice something, I used the same uh, hand signal for load up that I did for the place command. Just seems to work real well, okay? Sit, no sit, good. So, what happened? I asked her to sit, she didn't sit. I tapped Alicia. Now, as a trainer, as you a trainer at home, if she was slow one time, she may be slow again. We're supposed to be ready for that next time. Next command is the heel command. The heel command is where we have an imaginary box beside us. It's our job to keep her in that box when we're walking and moving, no matter what the speed, her job to stay in that box. Okay, if she moves out of the box, we're gonna tap her back to our side, and when we stop, she should sit automatically. Here's the hand signal, heel. So we're gonna walk right towards the camera. We stop, she sits, good girl. I can step away. Uh, she thought about it, but she held it. That's good. I can step away. She needs to hold it. Heel. Return. Step aside. She can come back to the box. Good girl. I'm even going to turn the other way. Stop. Good girl. Step out again. Why did I step out that time? I wanted to see if she was going to think about committing to me. Remember, if she does it something once, she's going to do it over and over again until you fix it. Frank, good girl. Last thing I'm going to do is, as I told you I would move on, is the off-leash come command. It's a little bit different here, but I'm trying to get her where she's not really paying any attention to me. And when she's not paying attention to me, envision this is in your yard, in your backyard, in your home and she's not really uh, listening, not really doing anything but checking out the birds or the squirrels, butterflies, things like that. What we want to do, again, pretend like she's off leash and pretend like she's not watching me, which she is. All right, pretend like she's not watching me. And uh, I would go, Annie, hey baby, what you got? Come. You notice I wave, good girl, great. I waved at her, I said, hey Annie, look what I got. It could be a toy, it could be a tree. But I did not tell her to come until she committed to coming to me, okay? If I told her to come and she looked and decided she didn't want what I had and went on, she just learned she could ignore come. That's how dogs learn to ignore come from a very early age. We don't mean it, we don't get them to come, or when they do come, we do something that may seem like a punishment, like putting them up while we leave, or, or we actually punish them for not coming the first time. We never want that to happen. Come has to be a positive, okay? Has to be a positive off leash. We praise her, we love her, we break her. And I'll go so far as to say, when you're out in the yard and your dog runs up to you, pet her, love her, and then send her on her way. If she sees you and starts running to you, 
give her that command, pet her, love her, and go on. We do not want her to think that the come command is rigged because it can very definitely save her life one day. I hope this has helped. I think I've covered everything. My name again is Jim Hodges, 336-945-3232, jimhodgesdogtraining.com, Facebook, Jim Hodges Dog Training. I'm here for you. If you have questions, email me, call me. As far as Annie goes, uh, I will work with Annie the rest of her life for free. All I ask my owners to do is give me a call. If you can't figure it out, come out to me and there's no charge. I truly do care. She's going to be a good girl. She is going to go back to doing some of the things she used to until our owners show her that she's in the lead, that they're leaders. They, they're the leaders. Uh, just takes a little bit of work. A little bit of obedience, again, is the best way to teach it. Thank you so much and God bless.